One major collaborator for Mildred Pierce that didn't return for Possessed was director of photography Ernest Haller. Kurt Bernhard would not have Haller on his film. He hated the cameraman's habit of constantly adjusting lights after every take. Bernhardt craved spontaneity in the actor's performances, and he felt Haller's tinkering was a distraction. And Joan Crawford agreed. But then she rejected every other cameraman on the Warner Brothers lot. Remember what I said about who was actually in charge here. Bernhardt finally suggested a cameraman he'd worked with in Europe, Kurt Courant. Even though Courant had never shot a film in Hollywood, Jack Warner and Joan Crawford agreed to let him shoot tests with the actress. And Crawford loved the results. Unfortunately, Courant was not a member of Cinematographers Guild Local 659, but Crawford wanted him, so Jack Warner offered to add 13 union cameramen to the Warner Brothers newsreel department if the Guild would grant a waiver allowing Courant to shoot the film. But the Guild refused. Sid Hickox was then assigned to shoot the film, but after several days, Crawford demanded he be replaced. Finally, in the 11th hour, she approved the hiring of Giuseppe Valentino, a.k.a. Joe Valentine, an Italian emigre who'd been working mostly as a freelance cameraman since the silent era, and whose only recent hits were a pair of Hitchcock films, Saboteur and Shadow of a Doubt. Bernhardt and Valentine proved perfectly simpatico as the director challenged his cameraman with lots of unusual setups and complicated tracking shots, all of which Valentine knocked out with ease. This film may have been the reason Hitchcock hired Valentine for his next project, Rope, which created the illusion of the film being enacted in a single long take. To prepare for her role, Crawford visited Los Angeles hospitals to observe the behavior of women being treated for mental illnesses. After the film's release, one of those patients tried to sue Crawford for, quote, stealing her life. That must be quite a compliment for an actress. Crawford was proud of this performance, and she was seen as a frontrunner for the Oscar in 1947. It's very flattering. It feels wonderful to be wanted by someone. I needed that feeling right now more than you'll ever know. But the Academy Awards ceremony that year featured the original Moonlight moment when Frederick March, presenting the Oscar for Best Actress, announced Rosalind Russell as the winner, then realized his mistake and called Loretta Young to the stage. Young was so surprised she demanded to see the envelope as evidence. Well, personally, I'm surprised Crawford didn't demand a full recount. FYI, Robert Osborne had Jones' performance in Possessed on his personal should-have-won-the-Oscar list. Next week, I'll be screening Walk a Crooked Mile, a film from 1948 starring Lewis Hayward and Dennis O'Keefe about an international nuclear spy ring. In the meantime, remember, you can ask questions or gab with us about these films at Noir Alley if you do the Twitter thing, or follow Noir Alley on Facebook, or just go completely crazy and do both. Until then, remember... Whenever you watch Joan Crawford, Joan Crawford watches you.